What's going on, man? It is Corey, and welcome to, y'all ready, man? We finally got a name for this. Y'all ready for this? Welcome to Counter Corey, man. That's what I'm running with for the name of this show. Counter Corey, shout out to my guy, Law, man. He suggested it on the very first episode of this. And for those of you who don't know, this show right here is pretty much my take on a couple of topics and things that have been going on in music in the past couple of weeks or the past week. And I pretty much just want to bring it here to the Brand Man Network platform so I can get you guys' opinions on some of these things. We can talk about it. We can debate. We can get some discussions going on. All of that cool stuff. And also, 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 before we dive into the video, for all of my producers watching this, make sure you stick around until the end of the video. I have a very important announcement to make that will impact you. It's probably something that you want to do, man. I'm telling you, you're going to want to get in on this. So make sure you watch until the very end of the video. Until I'm done, get those details. But with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into some of these topics. So the big story of the week, what I feel like has been pretty much the biggest story of the week, is this Gold Link, Mac Miller, Anderson Pack situation that's been going on. Now, for those of you who have not seen about it, who have not heard about it, Gold Link and Anderson Pack had a little bit of a beef this week, man. They were going back and forth. Well, it wasn't really a back and forth. It was more like one statement dropped, another statement dropped, and then media speculation, like always, right? So, Corey, what are you talking about, man? What's what's going on here? So, on I think it was Tuesday, Gold Link took to Instagram to post a post about Mac Miller. And in the post, he, I won't read the whole post because the post is very long. If you want to read it, it's on Gold Link's Instagram still. He's bold. He hasn't taken it down. But it's a very long post. So with me not going over that whole thing, what Gold Link pretty much said or what the post was about was it was a weird, it was a weird post of him kind of paying homage to Mac Miller, or at least that's how I took it. Actually, I'll read a little bit of it. So it starts off Gold Link saying, I'll be lying if I said I was surprised to hear that you died on us. Not because you were necessarily troubled, but because you were special and because of that, you were troubled. At your peak, you were the archetypal rapper all of us wanted to be, which was independent, but you're also just a kid with really bright eyes about life. Um, he continues to go into the post and then he starts to talk about how he felt like the Divine Feminine, which was Mac Miller's last album that he released before he passed, was inspired by um, Gold Link's first mixtape. I can't think of the exact name of it. Let me find it. Uh, and after that, we didn't talk. So the post is pretty much Gold Link saying that, hey, man, you know, I know that we weren't always on the best terms, but I do consider you a friend. I do, you know, even though I feel like you copied or you may have stole concepts from my project for your project, I still love you. We're still friends, all of that stuff. That's what I got out of the post. That's what I got out of that very lengthy post. Like I said, I would recommend you go read it so you know completely what I'm talking about. But that is what I got from the post. Now, Anderson Pack responds, not immediately, but damn near immediately, man. Um, and his post was on the offensive side, or on the defensive side, I guess. Maybe you know, he's defending Mac Miller. On the defensive side. I would imagine your weird ass posted up somewhere just like this when you decided to make that disrespectful, narcissistic, jealously, grossly unnecessary post. Why you would do it, I can't even understand it. Maybe your belt was wrapped around your goddamn waist too tight, or maybe it was a choker cutting the circulation off to the brain, but since you felt it necessary to bring me up twice, I mean, he did bring up Anderson Pack in the post. He talked about how they both had a song with Anderson Pack that sounded the same, all this stuff. Uh, and my boy ain't here to respond. I'ma say it like this. You ain't the first to make an album inspired by a relationship. You ain't the first to make a song featuring Anderson Pack, but you are the first to disrespect my friend who is no longer here for absolutely no reason, and I can't stand for that. Anderson Pack goes into this lengthy post, pretty much coming at Gold Link and calling him out for disrespecting Mac Miller, all that stuff. Now, a couple days later, Gold Link had a show. He put out footage of him at his show, pretty much saying, like, yo, man, I don't care who this spreads out to from here. I'm going to speak my piece. And in that piece, he called Mac Miller one of his best friends in the industry. He said that he was one of the few people actually looking out for him when he actually made it into it and that he would never go on to disrespect Mac Miller. Now, like I said in the beginning of this, I, I, didn't, I didn't really see too much wrong with the post personally. Maybe it's the way he started it. I mean, starting a, a, a sentence with, I'm not surprised that you died, or I wasn't surprised to hear that you died, doesn't necessarily set the tone for a positive conversation, right? 
But other than that, what I got from it was it sounds like a friend going like, yo, bro, even though, you know, you kind of you kind of jogged me a little bit, you kind of copied me a little bit, I still love you and I'm still proud of you and I still support you and I'm glad for everything that you could accomplish. I could see how it could be taken as jealousy, especially once you start bringing in plaques and awards and, you know, it's a lot for an artist to accuse another artist to even for even being inspired specifically by that project. It's just a it's a whole thing with artists, right? Because at the end of the day, it sounds like you're saying, "Yo, bro, you copy my work." So I could I could see it. I get it. I understand the outrage, and the fan tweets and everything about it. But I personally, just reading that, didn't really. It didn't sound it didn't sound disrespectful. I didn't it didn't feel like there was malicious intent behind it. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, like I said, this has pretty much been the talk of the week since it popped off. Let me know whose side you fall on in this. And speaking of beef, man, speaking of beef, our boy <laughs> Lil Uzi Vert is back in the news for some controversy, man. I, I guess it's not really news yet. I didn't see too many major media outlets picking this up, except for like academics. But <laughs> so Uzi took to Twitter uh, yesterday, Thanksgiving, you know, Thanksgiving night. To air out some grievances, man. Air out some grievances and to answer some fan questions. So it popped off when he hopped on Twitter to pretty much continue this Don Cannon DJ drama beef that he's been having for the past shit. Damn near since he's been signed, right? Uzi signed to Generation Now. Generation Now is owned by DJ Drummond and Don Cannon, meaning that he's signed to DJ Drummond and Don Cannon. He does not like DJ Drummond and Don Cannon. He's made it very, very clear before, and he wants us to remember it. Um, based on these tweets that he put out. So he went on Twitter to say, my best friend, oh, fuck DJ Drummer, he broke. Niggas need me to drop to pay bills. My best friend, me ain't got more money than Drummer. I swear on everything, he not even in the industry. I want to let my family know, and I say family because all the fans left a long time ago. Only family stayed, so if you stayed, I'm thankful for you. We're going to party so hard in no time. EA, I love you. I swear, time's just been crazy. I'm okay now. Um... That's a lot, man. Uzi's basically like, look, bro, DJ Drummond and Don Cannon want this album out because they're broke. Um, he then goes on, and that's when I say, man, it just became like Uzi just just calling people out, bro. So then he goes in on Molly Raw, who is uh produced a couple of like Uzi's like first big breakout hits. I think he produced like majority of like his first two projects, if I remember correctly. He was pretty much like the the peanut butter to, to Uzi's jelly sandwich, you know what I'm saying, in the very beginning of his career. But apparently they're not even on good terms anymore because he took to Twitter again, like I said, in this in this same rent and pretty much called him out. Pretty much let people know like, yo, I'm not fucking with Molly Ra anymore. And what he said exactly was Molly Ra's snake too. He tried to run off with 20 bands back in the G. Wonder what that turned into. Molly Ra comes back. Man, I feel it, bro. Don't let these rappers be out here slandering your name unless they got proof, bro. Nigga, what? Speak fast when you speak in my name. You sound dumb as shit. Exactly why you ain't answering. You know the real. Uzi responded, I never said you wasn't good with beats. Shit hot. You just be running off with the plug. He then went on to accuse one of his old friends of being the one that was leaking and selling his music, which if all of this is true, right? If it's true that Molly Raw and his friend, I think Late Show, and you know his, his friends were around that time selling his music, which if you remember, man, that 2017 to or even early last year, there were a lot of car, I mean, a lot of Uzi leaks coming out. So that means that were, if this is true, they were making a good bit amount of money off of him. And I feel Uzi, they need to be checked. But if it is not the case, um, or even if that is the case, man, I feel like this is one of those things that should be handled off of social media, man. Like, we don't need to know about this. We don't need, the fans don't need to know that y'all are beefing um, unless you feel like it's going to push into a narrative or something. But, man, I even, I'll take that back. I guess they did handle it off air, man. Uzi must have been feeling the, 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 the Thanksgiving wine a little bit. A fan then jumped into the conversation and asked, what about you and Cardi? Y'all still could. To which he responded, no, but I'm not a tough guy. I don't beef. We could have a dress off, though. <sighs> and I'm a Uzi fan, right? So when I see this, man, when I see the pictures of him on the football field in the designer skirts or even like these tweets of him just calling people out, right? Because he does this. 
I would argue like every three or four months. He just started randomly calling people out on Twitter, and then he ducks off for like six months. Um, bro, I just want to hear Eternal Otaki at this point. I, I'm almost to the point where I no longer care about your grievances because, and I like I said, I consider myself a fan. I consider myself in that family he talked about in that first tweet because I still keep up with this man, bro. I still follow this man. I still look out for the music, bro. I check my Spotify uh, released radar playlist like once a week, hoping for a new Uzi song. But it is to the point where I feel like his fan base. We're starting to get tired of the antics because there hasn't been enough music from him to justify him calling these people out. It's different when you're putting stuff out or, you know, um, you're being active and it gives us something to rally behind. It's like, yeah, man, let's defend Uzi. But it's like, man, we ain't got nothing, bro. We ain't got nothing. And it's hard for me to believe that it's a thousand percent done Cannon and DJ Drummer's fault because it's like if they really want him to put a project out, because they were broke and they were trying to make money, they're his, they're his label heads. There's nothing he could do about it. They could, they could upload that joint to TuneCore in a heartbeat, and there's nothing he could do about it, which makes me feel like there's some deeper issues here. So, I don't know, man. Hopefully, the next time we get Uzi in the news, man, it's for some music, bro. Like, hopefully, it's me talking about his project that's coming out or something song. So, you know, uh, I guess we'll just stay tuned for that, see what happens from that. Hopefully, Eternal Taki comes soon, and Uzi stays out of the news for dumb shit, pretty much. So let's move on to this story that's been making its way through the rap community this week. It's actually old, but we're going to get into that. And it is BBC named Young Thug the most influential rapper of the decade, I believe. Oh, yeah. Young Thug is, he they named Young Thug 21st century's most influential rapper. Now, this post or this article came out about a month ago, I think like late October. Um, but for whatever reason, the rap community is just now talking about it like people have just now caught wind of it and are like what young thug is the most influential rapper of the 21st century huh and Lil Wayne responded was like no me young thug being the good sport he was wrote back like yeah you're right you the goat you know up hands emoji but I want to dive into young thug even being considered to be the most influential rapper of the 21st century and I will say this I don't 100% agree. One of the most influential rappers of the 21st century, a thousand percent. There's no rapper now, especially coming from Atlanta or anyone who wants to be Southern sounding that does not imitate Young Thug to some extent. I would argue that a lot of his label mates, like the YSL people are like his offspring. They're like, if Young Thug split into like clones from some weird Jimmy Neutron machine, you would get Gunna and uh, Lil Keed and they would be the same, but kind of different, so they could do their own thing. That's how I see it. That's how I peep the label. So, the most influential rapper of the 21st century? No, because you're leaving out artists like Kanye. It's like, shit, you're leaving out Drake. Wayne was still in the 21st century. Um, Kid Cudi. There's so many people that I feel like could be put in that same box to where you could make a compelling argument. One of the most influential rappers of the 21st century? A thousand percent. Name me one mainstream rapper right now that does not do a crazy flow or some weird all over the place shit that Young Thug has been doing and pushing since like 2011, 2012, right? Um, some of your most favorite rappers are just now starting to get eccentric. This man has been eccentric since he came out, bro. And being in Atlanta, watching him come up, knowing what he kind of had to go through from a brand issue to just not even that, but just like what the music in the city was sounding like at the time or what was being popular versus what he was coming out with, definitely, man. One of the most influential rappers, 21st century, I agree. The most influential rapper, I don't know, man. I can't I can't give it to him. I can't I can't all the way give it to him, bro, because like I said, I keep thinking of Drake and Kanye and Kid Cudi and just some of these people who changed the landscape of music to make it even possible for someone like Young Thug to come up, if that makes sense, so... I don't know, man. I encourage you to go read the article. The article is really good, actually. Uh, the journalist, what's his name? Uh, the journalist Jeff Weiss that wrote this piece actually made some good points, man. He did, he did a little history, man. He did some digging, man. He went into the whole little backstory of Young Thug, and he made some valid points on why he thinks he is the most influential rapper. I'm just saying, bro, one of the most, I'll give you top five, maybe even top three if I really thought about it, but I would give you top five most influential rapper of the 21st century. The most influential rapper? Nah, man, you don't have to debate me about it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you have Young Thug in your top five? 
If not, why? Is Young Thug one of the most influential rappers of the century? If you don't think so, please let me know. But I'm telling you, man, I'm ready for this Young Thug smoke because I, I kind of, I, I agree with it a little bit, but just not enough, bro. Not number one. And lastly, I want to kick it off with some, this isn't, this isn't funny news. It's not funny at all. All this news has been pretty serious. This was a slow week for music news, man. There's been like no funny news. I've been able to come in here and just like laugh at something in like the last three episodes. But Jay-Z is suing an Australian book company for using his likeness and his lyrics without his permission. Now, the publishing company is called Little Homie. It's an Australian online-based retailer that has been selling like these children educational books. Um, and the book in particular that he is talking about is it's a children's alphabet book. It's designed to teach kids the alphabet, and the book is called A B to J Z. Now, apparently, they've been selling this book since like 2017. They raised money for it from a Kickstarter campaign, put it out. Jay Z caught wind of it early last year, and his lawyer is alleging that they've been making cease and desist and takedowns since March of last year, and they've just been completely getting ignored. And Jay Z's like, nah, bro, y'all not gonna get, keep making money off my name. And I don't approve of it or, you know, you're not even trying to cut me in. Now, when I first saw the headline for this, I was like, man, Jay, bro, you're going to sue the, the children's book, the, the book company that's trying to teach kids ABCs using rap. But I started to look into the story a little bit more. And apparently this goes way deeper than I thought it goes. So there are also articles calling out. The owner of the company, her name is like Jessica Chase or Jessica Chice. Uh, I got to find her last name and figure out how to say it. But there are pictures of her and her husband on Facebook wearing blackface, um, saying the N word, like going hard on the N word. Like not like, not like, yo, you know, what up, blah, blah, but like going like hard with it. And even her, um, there's a, like a portion in the book that says something about like, how they this book was made by her and her baby daddy who to like make money for their little hood right or something talking about their kid so what we're seeing here is an extreme extreme case of cultural appropriation um from this this white australian retailer coming out taking these rap concepts profiting off of it putting the book out and then not only not cutting the rapper in on it but then you know being a person that we, you know, the the, the rap community is, is mostly black people. It's, it's like, that, that's, that's our culture, right? Um, so then not only is it not coming to or profiting from someone in the culture, it's also been made by someone who we probably would never allow into the culture. Like, we're, we're it, like, rap fans would not have stood for this Australian white woman wearing blackface trying to sell a rap book. That teaches our kids the ABCs, bro. I'm not letting some woman in blackface teach my kids the ABCs. Like, fuck that. So, once I started looking into that side, I went back to Jay Z's side. I'm like, yo, bro, get your money, get this book taken down. And then you should put the book out, bro. I hope Jay Z sees this as an opportunity. Like, man, there are people out here who are into this. Let me go out and find someone who's trying to take this exact same idea, do it from a better place, do it from a better place in their hearts, and help them get it done the correct way. Because I'm not going to lie, the book name is hard. From A.B. to Jay-Z, that's a, that's a hard book name. I can't even knock that. Um, but everything else, look, man, they got a picture on their page. It's got, like, this little white kid with headphones on, and the, the picture says hip-hop nigga. Like, it's crazy, bro. Like, y'all have to look this story up. Um, and I'm saying this stuff about the blackface, courtesy of the root. But look into it, man. Jay Z is suing this book company. Hopefully, hopefully he gets it taken down. I'm on Jay Z's side with this, man. Get this book out. We need we need better representation when it comes to this type of stuff, man. Maybe we should do a book. Maybe Brand Man Network should do an educational kids book. I don't know, man. We'll I'm gonna talk to Sean about it. That might be a lane. Yeah, that might be a lane. Other than that, there's not really too much music that I'm personally excited about that's coming out this week. I know The Game has an album coming out. The Weeknd is slated to drop some new music. 21 Savage is dropping some new music. Um, I haven't heard too much about projects. It felt like last week was the big project week. We got YNW Melly, Trippy Red, all these people, man. But it's, like I said, it's been a pretty slow week this week. Um, but if you know of anything that's coming out, if you're hyped for anything, drop them in the comment section below. I'm always looking to be put onto new music. I love hearing what you guys are listening to outside of your own music. Don't just send me and plug your own stuff, but music you're actually listening to. I always love to check it out. Now, let's get into this, I, this thing I was talking about in the beginning, right? 
for all of my producers who are watching this right now, we at the Brandman Network are doing a contest specifically tailored for you guys. It is going to be a beat submission based contest. It's like $2 of upload. It's going to be a fan voting process, and we'll also vote on it, pick our favorites out of the bunch. And you'll actually win some really cool prizes. So we're giving away um, the top prize winner gets access to our Cutting Out the Middleman course that me and Sean are going to be putting out in a couple of weeks, or putting out pretty soon, actually, maybe like today or tomorrow. And that course is pretty much a marketing agency in the box. It teaches you how to not need marketers like me and Sean, pretty much giving you the foundational structure to, to do all the marketing things on your own, contact list, all this stuff that we really should be charging y'all a grip for, but we're not charging y'all a grip for it because we love y'all and we just want you to submit some beats into our contest and try to win it that way. And then not only that, man, you will get some exposure out of it. We're going to be running ads on the, on the campaign email blasts, all these things that will bring you some customers, man. You know, the rappers follow us, bro. They love us. So if you're interested in entering that contest, the link will be in the description below or it's brandmannetwork.com slash beat battle. Go in, sign up. Um, you have like two weeks of, as of me making this to submit. I think the deadline date is, or the deadline date is December 15th. 2019 man you got into december 15th to get those submissions in that's what like two and a half weeks two weeks so like i said a link will be in the description below go and check that out and other than that man as always if you like this video please like share it send it along to your friends come and talk to me as always about some of these topics on instagram on twitter or whatever at cory the savior all those links will be in the description and if you didn't come here to just get some entertainment, you want to learn something, go and check out my segment, The Digital Dash, also on the Brand Man Network. Lots of good game on there. Check that stuff out. Other than that, I will see y'all next week. Peace.